This is the brand new MetaQuest 3S. It's the latest VR headset from Meta, and in today's video, we're gonna find out if this headset is worth the $299 price tag. But first, I wanna give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Wondershare Recover It. Have you ever lost data? Like maybe your hard drive got corrupted and you lost some important family photos, or maybe you can't find what you're looking for on your SD card. Well, I can tell you from personal experience, losing data absolutely sucks. In fact, it happens to me way more than it should. Specifically when it comes to recording these videos, whether it's for this channel or my main channel, I end up losing footage a lot. As the name suggests, Wondershare Recover, it can recover all of your photo files, video files, important files, audio files, whatever it is that you're trying to recover, they've got you covered. Wondershare Recover, it supports data recovery from 2,000 plus storage devices, 1,000 plus file formats, and also 500 plus real life data loss scenarios like formatting system crashes and viral attacks. And I always personally turn to Wondershare Recover it whenever my SD card gets deleted or a file gets corrupted so that I can save my videos and not have to completely refilm them, which is the worst. Plus, Wondershare Recover it now has Mac compatibility. Although I have been using it on Windows computers in the past, I primarily use it for Mac and it's the best. Using Wondershare Recover It is really easy. All you need to do in the case of an SD card, which is how I mainly use this program, I plug the SD card into the computer and then I select the files that I want to recover. And now in addition to their Mac compatibility, Wondershare Recover It has released their V13 update, which has upgraded data recovery for external devices like SD cards and an optimized user experience. I'd love to know what you would recover if you could recover something using Wondershare Recover It. Now don't get crazy with your comments, but still let me know what you'd recover in the comment section down below. I probably shouldn't open that can of worms. Regardless, check out Wondershare share recover download it for free and try it out by clicking the link in the top of the description below and once again huge thank you to wondershare recover for sponsoring today's video so I always feel like I need to say this in any of my VR headset reviews, but I was never a fan of VR because I always thought that it was a little dystopian. Throwing these on, immersing yourself in a virtual world that was not really part of the real world and you feel disconnected from the people around you and they feel disconnected from you. And while I still sort of feel that way, I've been reviewing VR headsets for the last like almost five years at this point. And uh, you know what? I, I kind of like them. There is still no situation and no world in which I would wear VR headsets on my face for more of the day than not wearing a VR headset, but still, I do like these for casual gaming. As you can tell from the title and the thumbnail of today's video, this is the MetaQuest 3S. It's the latest headset from Meta, and in a lot of ways, it's sort of the light version or the budget option to the MetaQuest 3. So last year, Meta dropped the MetaQuest 3, which was a pretty huge improvement over the MetaQuest 2. It was, however, a $500 headset. The same price as a game console like an Xbox Series X or a PlayStation 5 with a lot less games and a lot less opportunity for play. That said, it's still an excellent headset even to this day. It's relatively powerful, it looks really great, and it's very lightweight and you're not tethered to anything like the PlayStation VR 2. However, up until recently, if you didn't want to spend $500 to get a MetaQuest 3, the only other reasonable VR option that was available on the market that didn't require a PC or a PlayStation or something like that was the MetaQuest 2. And that headset, while still good and still a decent an option if you've never tried VR is not really anything compared to the MetaQuest 3. However, a few weeks ago, Meta released the brand new MetaQuest 3S, which is essentially a MetaQuest 3 on a budget. And I've heard a lot of people say that this headset sort of sits in between the MetaQuest 2 and the MetaQuest 3, and in a lot of ways, while yes, I agree with that, I still think this headset is closer to the MetaQuest 3 than it is to the MetaQuest 2. But in my opinion, the best part about the MetaQuest 3S is the fact that it comes in at a retail price of just $299, which means you can have essentially a MetaQuest 3 VR experience, which in a lot of ways is a cutting edge VR experience for like $200 cheaper than the MetaQuest 3. Now, of course, being a significantly cheaper option to the MetaQuest 3, there are some downgrades from that headset, which honestly aren't as bad as you might think. But first, let's go over the design. The design of the MetaQuest 3S is a little bit different than anything that we've really seen before from either the MetaQuest 3 or the MetaQuest 2. First of all, you've got a camera array on the front of the headset that looks different than you had on the MetaQuest 3, although the sensors are all pretty similar. These sensors not only allow for hand tracking and depth sensing and all the sort of VR sensors that you need to be done, but also allow for color pass through. Other than the rearranged camera array, you've also got this ventilation area that sort of runs all the way around the front of the headset. The headset is also thicker than the MetaQuest 3, not by a huge amount, but it is noticeably thicker. Surprisingly though, at least from my testing, this didn't actually really affect the way that it sat on your face. It didn't feel overly large. In fact, I'll be honest, when I first threw it on, I didn't even notice that much of a difference at all, if any. As with the MetaQuest 3, you've got a USB-C charging port right there on the side. You've also got a power button. However, unlike the MetaQuest 3, you unfortunately do not have an aux port, which means you can't plug in headphones into this device, which is kind of a glaring omission. There are, however, some design improvements and functionality improvements on the MetaQuest 3S over the MetaQuest 3. The first is the volume rocker that you have on the bottom of the device. It's actually a physical volume rocker, which you can click when you're wearing the headset. The second is this button 
right here, which allows you to go from full VR mode to pass through mode by just clicking that button. While yes, you could absolutely still do that on the MetaQuest 3, the way that you activated it was by tapping the side of the headset, which kind of felt like you were hitting yourself in the face. This is a much more reasonable solution, at least in my opinion. Internally, the MetaQuest 3 and the MetaQuest 3S are almost exactly the same, at least when it comes to GPU, CPU, and RAM. They both feature the Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 and eight gigabytes of RAM, and they're both compatible with all the same games and applications. Another similarity between these two headsets are the controllers, and the fact that these controllers are exactly the same as the controllers that you get on the MetaQuest 3. Unlike the MetaQuest 2, these controllers are a lot smaller, a lot lighter, and they don't feature that sort of ring that wraps around your hand, which didn't really bother me visually, but I did find myself hitting my hand on the ceiling a bunch uh, because I have low ceilings and that ring was just high enough that I could sort of tap the ceiling with it. I'm about 5'11", and I guess my ceiling is, is well, pretty low. However, for some reason, when I was using these controllers and I was throwing passes, I didn't find myself hitting the ceiling very much at all compared to the MetaQuest 2's controllers. Obviously, the button layout is exactly the same because it's the same controller and they still feel great in the hand and all the buttons feel clicky and responsive. Of course, these controllers use AA batteries. Not that that's a huge downside to any of the MetaQuest controllers, but there is something really nice about the PSVR having rechargeable batteries and the fact that you can just drop them into a charging dock and they're just charged and ready to go whenever you want to play your PSVR 2. Like the MetaQuest 3, you've still got some cameras on the sides of the headset which allow for hand tracking and tracking sort of off to the side of the headset. The headband on the MetaQuest 3S is the same as it was on the MetaQuest 3, which is fine. I've heard a lot of people not like it, but I personally don't really have too big of a problem with it. I will find that it does kind of slowly come loose as you wear it and as you play games, so that's something you're gonna have to readjust pretty often. But even still, it wasn't a huge problem. It wasn't a problem enough for me to wanna go out and buy a new head strap. I do find the PSVR 2's headband significantly superior to this headband, but it's not a huge deal. So up to this point, you're probably thinking, what's the difference between the MetaQuest 3S and 3? It sounds like the MetaQuest 3S is essentially a MetaQuest 3, especially because it has the same processors. Well, there is one major difference, and that's the screens and the lenses. I guess that's two differences, but they both kind of work with your eyes, so they're all one function. So the screens used on the 3S are lower resolution than the screens used on the 3. The MetaQuest 3 comes with a resolution of 2064 by 2208 and a 1218 pixels per inch. The MetaQuest 3S, however, comes with a resolution of 1832 by 1920 and a PPI of 773. So although both the 3 and the 3S are capable of up to 120 hertz refresh rate, the resolution is definitely downgraded on the Meta 3S. Not only that, on 3S, you've got a smaller field of view. You've got 96 degrees horizontally and 90 degrees vertically, whereas on the 3, you've got 110 degrees horizontally and 96 degrees vertically. Not a huge difference, you still feel very immersed in the games, but it is somewhat noticeable if you're comparing them side by side. And the final difference, which for some people might be a deal breaker, is the fact that the MetaQuest 3S uses Fresnel lenses versus the MetaQuest 3's pancake lenses. Now Fresnel lenses were the lenses used in the MetaQuest 2, and they're not a terrible technology, but they do definitely have sweet spots. In the center of both of these lenses, you get a very clear image, but as you kind of look off to the sides, things get a bit distorted. Whereas on the MetaQuest 3, you have the more premium feeling pancake lenses, which have a much wider sweet spot. And pancake lenses are actually the lenses that you have on the PlayStation VR 2. Fresnel lenses also require a bit more space to operate correctly, so that's why the MetaQuest 3S is a bit thicker than the MetaQuest 3 with the pancake lenses. And honestly, for me, the most noticeable difference was the lenses. Now, it definitely wasn't a deal breaker, but it did feel like a slightly less premium experience. And the quality of the lenses paired with the lower resolution did make things feel a bit worse. However, going back to the processor and the internals, Everything else about this headset is exactly the same as it is in the MetaQuest 3. And what's interesting, at least from what I could tell, because this is pushing less pixels, it seems to be a little bit snappier. Having tested the same games in both headsets, I feel like the MetaQuest 3S might be ever so slightly faster. Now that totally could just be recency bias for me. I don't know, but I will say it does kind of make sense. Obviously the 3S compared to the 2 is night and day in terms of processing power. I mean, the 2 can't even play some of the games that the 3S and 3 can play. So right off the bat, if you want to play all of the MetaQuest games that are available, you've got to get a 3 or a 3S. And honestly, I think another huge benefit to having a slightly lower resolution is that the battery life on the 3S is better than that on the 3. I found that I was getting two and a half hours around of playtime on this device. I'm playing through an entire season of uh, football and I'm able to get literally around two to two and a half hours every single time. Obviously a huge benefit of the 3 and the 3S over the 2 is the color pass through that you have on both of these headsets. On the 2, it's a black and white pass through. It's very slow, it's very grainy, it does not look good whatsoever. On the 3 and the 3S, you've got this really clear color pass through that feels very fast, you can see screens, you can read monitors, you can do all sorts of things that you couldn't do in the two, and all around the color pass through almost allows you to walk around in this headset without tripping over things, which is kind of wild. Last time I played this headset, I kept it on for the entire two and a half hours, which yes, it did hurt my neck after a while, and I think I threw out my arm playing football, I'm not kidding about that. Uh, but I will say that I was able to, 
I shouldn't admit this, go to the bathroom. I was able to text people. I was, I was hard to unlock my phone, but I could text people. Uh, I was able to walk up and down my hallway. No issues whatsoever. The pass through is excellent on this, even in low light. I did wash my hands before picking up the controllers again though, just saying. When you review tech, you've got to test everything, right? You got to test every, every aspect. Gaming wise, the MetaQuest 3S is a blast. I had so much fun. The same amount of fun that I had in the 3. Like I said, they're a pretty similar gaming experience. Um, new era football 2025. Amazing, love that game. That's the whole reason I bought this headset in the first place or bought the first MetaQuest headset that I owned. Uh, Star Wars, which I haven't played in a minute, was great. Beat Saber, awesome. I've really been digging the mixed reality VR games that in some cases allow you to fight off aliens in your room or fight off zombies through your actual windows or if nothing else, just feel more present in your family room with your family while you're playing a game. Which again, yes, does feel very dystopian, but for you, you don't feel as disconnected because you can sort of see them out of your peripherals. And while no, the resolution on this headset was not as good as the three, it processes the games the same. And uh, VR games just don't look that great. Yes, you can connect it to your computer, computer wirelessly and play games like Half-Life Alex, which do look a lot better, but that's not something I do on a very regular basis. And generally when I'm wearing this headset, I'm playing games natively off of the headset itself. And let's be real, the games are not gonna look like console games. They're not gonna look like PC games. They look like VR games. They look kind of like mobile games. And honestly, that's not terrible. One plus about buying the MetaQuest 3S right now is that it comes bundled with Batman Arkham Shadow, which you can actually grab that bundle through the YouTube shopping tab on your screen and through the links in the description below. That bundle might not always be available, I don't know, but as of right now it is, and the game is fine. It's not like my favorite game in the world, but it gets the job done. It's a nice first game to try out. But even if that game's not for you, over the last four or five years of testing VR headsets, the game library that Meta has has improved dramatically. There are so many games that you can play, so many things that you can find that are weird, uh, especially things like VR chat. I, I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you like that sort of stuff. It's, it's, a, it's a weird experience, man. I'm not gonna lie to you. So all of that being said, is the MetaQuest 3S worth it? The short answer, absolutely. For $299, you are getting a really great gaming experience. I probably would not use this headset for anything else other than gaming, although you can if you want to. If you already own the MetaQuest 3, there is no reason to get this headset because it's a slightly worse version of that headset. However, if you own something like the MetaQuest 2 and you want that new color pass through that looks really, really good, get the 3S. And if you own anything older than the 2 or any other headset or no headsets at all, this is a no-brainer. The 3S is absolutely the way to go. I think if you want the best of the best in terms of consumer grade VR headsets. Obviously there are much more expensive VR headsets that you can grab like the Apple Vision Pro, which actually has less games than this. Uh, you can grab the MetaQuest Pro, uh, PlayStation VR 2. Depending on your platform, there are other options, but I would say the best all-in-one VR gaming headset solution is the MetaQuest 3S. This headset's absolutely incredible if you're into VR. Sure, you might buy this thing, play it for a week, and then literally never play it again, but that's kind of just the case with VR headsets right now. There's just no compelling reason other than games to get one. But if you're looking for the best bang for the buck gaming VR headset, the MetaQuest 3S is the way to go. But hey, at this point, I would love to know your thoughts on the MetaQuest 3S and whether you like this headset, whether you own any other VR headset, or whether you want to buy any other VR headset. Let me know all those thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.